All right, looks like we have folks coming in. Okay, let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome teachers, students, and many EF staffers. We are so glad you've decided to join us virtually for this exciting event today in celebration of Veterans Day with our very special guest, Second Lieutenant and World War II veteran, Betty Horseman. My name is Darby Jones, and I oversee educational partnerships for EF Explore America, and I'm joined by my colleague, Sarah Shaben, who organizes events for teachers around the country. Sarah will be co-moderating this event with me today as we hear Betty's story. And so, Betty, an enormous thank you to you for your service to this country and sharing your story with teachers and students far and wide. We are thrilled to be in an exclusive partnership with the Honor Flight Network that has afforded this opportunity, especially during this commemorative week. Veterans Day is truly a celebration to honor America's veterans for their patriotism, for their love of country and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. So Betty, we salute you. Uh, a quick reminder, although we can't see the rest of you, please type in any questions that you might have into the Q&A feature during our time together. And Sarah will be keeping an eye on that as we save time at the end to go through some of those questions. So with that said, welcome, Betty. We would love for you to start by just introducing yourself, where you're from and grew up, and any highlights of your family or your upbringing that you might like to share. Well, good day. I'm Betty Horseman. I live in a northern suburb of Chicago called Morton Grove. I've resided there for over 55 years. I was born in Minnesota. I'm a product of Minnesota, Swedes. My family moved to Chicago when I was six, and I've lived in Chicago ever since, except for my time in the service. I always wanted to help people and animals. I eventually narrowed it down to people. I decided I wanted to do something that actually helped and not be an x-ray technician, for instance, who just took the films. So I decided after interviewing a lot of people, physical therapy would be my profession. And I have been a physical therapist for 75 years. I took my basic educational program at the University of Michigan. After graduating there in 43, I was accepted at Mayo Clinic School of Physical Therapy for their program. It was an emergency program. Instead of being two years, it was shortened to one year because we were in wartime. After graduating from Mayo, I immediately enlisted in the Army, although I preferred the Navy since I'm a Minnesota Swede and blonde, I look better in blue than green. Navy turned me down because I'm nearsighted. But in any event, I entered the army and they promised me, no, I would not have to go overseas, which was a foolish statement. Six months later, after I finished my basic training at Fort Sam Houston and Fort Sam Houston, in Houston, Texas, I was overseas. With a brief stop in Oahu, where I treated Italian prisoners of war for physical therapy while waiting a permanent assignment. I was then sent to Saipan with a lengthy airplane trip. We stopped for dinner on the way to Saipan, I thought it was Saipan, and the entire field, airfield, was filled with soldiers. We were escorted off the plane in for dinner. And I said, naturally, what are all the men doing there? And the answer was they had not seen American women in years or months. After dinner, we went back to the plane and landed in Guam just for a day until I was transferred, which turned out to be my 18 month assignment on Saipan, where I treated both American patients and Japanese Imperial Marine patients. The American patients were not terribly motivated. Why should they be? If they got better, they went right back into fighting. Whereas the Japanese prisoners of war 
refused to acknowledge that the war was over. So they wanted to get better. So to this day, those patients, Japanese Imperial Marines were my best patients. I don't regret my time on Saipan. It taught me a lot. I established the first PT clinic in the hospital and Saipan. And I truly enjoyed my stay there, even though I hated the army food, which was chiefly mutton, mutton, and mutton. And to this day, I will not eat lamb. I lived off the islands, produce, which was pi pineapple, bananas. Those are the main two foods. And of course, spam, which my mother sent me and saved my life. I, I, I can't say again, I, I hated the army food. Uh, after discharge from Saipan, I came back to the United States, of course. And no, no welcome. I mean, I just came back. It seemed like I'd been on a vacation to the average person. I was fortunate that I lived in a northern suburb where they were just opening a new hospital. I interviewed for the job and was accepted. So I established the PT department at this first hospital. Then two more hospitals were opened in Chicago. Each one stole me away from the other one with, of course, money. I trained many, many aides while I was at my, um, my different hospitals. I stayed in hospitals for over 10 years in Chicago. And then I decided I was going to go into private practice. But let me backtrack a minute. While at the hospitals, I noticed we had a revolving door with patients. They'd come in from the nursing home, we'd upgrade them to walking, send them back to the nursing home. Weeks, sometimes months later, they'd come back unable to walk. So I contacted the Illinois Department of Public Health and said, what's the reason these people are coming back to us? It's just a revolving door. With their permission and after selling them an idea to train nurses in rehabilitation and nursing home aides, I developed a curriculum which the public, the Illinois Department of Public Health accepted. I then taught for 10 years for them, nurses and certified physical uh, aids, which became called rehab aids. Then I decided I was leaving a hospital and going into private practice to consult and provide therapists to nursing homes since they were not receiving any care other than from the nurses, which was good, I can't deny it, but our physical therapists help more people. I kept up my private practice for 34 years. And in that time, I became heavily involved in my national association, the American Physical Therapy Association. And we developed a section on geriatrics in order to really educate physical therapists into geriatric therapy. I was president of that and president of the National Association of Rehab Agencies. That's about the extent of it. Although now in my senior years, I do volunteer work at the v, local VA clinic and hospital and pro bono to my village. You have to stay active in what you do in order to, I think, live. Uh, my family was most supportive throughout my entire career. My mother and father, although my parents hated it when I went in service, my father was so irate, he said, you can't go into the army. I said, dad, I enlisted. 
So he took me to a quite famous store here in Chicago, Marshall Fields, and had a uniform made for me, which was significantly better quality than the Army issue. I still have the jacket that my dad had made. My sister was totally opposite from me. Her area of expertise and love was the theater. And she graduated from Goodman School here in Chicago. Unfortunately, I think she left her chosen profession after she married and had her first child. I strongly encourage anyone listening, particularly the younger people, to consider them a medical profession. I don't care which one any profession. We need people in medicine, especially women. And to you girls out there listening, we're not second class citizen to boys. We can do just as much as a man can do. So consider a medical profession. It's been my honor to help many patients and teach caregivers, which is very important. The patient can be upgraded in a hospital or a rehab unit and go home and decline if the caregiver does not know how to help them. So I encourage you again, all you girls listening, please consider a medical profession. I think that's the story of my life, really. And stay active. In three weeks, I'll be 100. I sincerely don't think I am a hunter. I wish I knew how old I felt. I would guess 30, 40, 50 maybe. I am really honored to have recently participated in her story, a trip, an honor flight trip solely for females to go to Washington DC and visit the various monuments. Her story took us to Arlington Cemetery where I was tremendously impressed with the presentation of the soldiers marching 21 steps, stopping at rest for 21 seconds, then marching again 21 steps and stopping. It's really, a spine tingling event. And if you ever get to Washington, please go to Arlington Cemetery and see that, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Again, I thank her story for that trip and being with 92 other female veterans. There were two of us from World War II. My other World War II veteran was 104, so I was not the oldest. I was only 99 and three fourths. And at this time, she is 105, mentally alert, but in a wheelchair. I'm very lucky to be able to bowl and drive at my age. I think that's about all I have to tell you. And you say that as if it's not a remarkable story that, that you just told us. What a career that you've had and, and a life that you've had. Um, we have, thank you for sharing. We have a couple of questions that have come up that I would love to ask you. The first, um, someone in the group asked, did you feel respected as a woman in the army? Absolutely not. And to this day, it's still, a, oh, you're a female veteran like how'd you get in or something no the only time i really felt respected was on her story flight i i recognized then that i know i was a veteran i'm proud to be a veteran but i was recognized on that trip yeah i'm so glad that you had the opportunity to participate in that and that they organized it it's um very well deserved 
another question uh, that came up, um, how did you feel, you know, you, would, you knew you wanted to help people and enlist, but how did you feel that day when you actually made the commitment? Were you excited? Were you nervous? I was extremely excited because I knew I had something to offer and I was proud someone would accept me so I could contribute something. Remember, this was wartime and the men were all volunteering. Uh, let me add something which has always bothered me. There were male restricted the number of males they accepted in the course to the almost 20 women in my class we had three men now when i enlisted i went in immediately as a second lieutenant the men that volunteered had to go into staff sergeants and this persisted i think until the 70s this not accepting the male role as a physical therapist. Yes, I was really excited. But again, I see my family wasn't, especially my father. Yeah. He had insisted that I, he was happy to put me through college and PT school because he said, I don't care what you do, but you must have a profession just in case your marriage goes sour. You've got to have something to fall back on. So he was, I think, ahead of his time. Women should have something to support themselves. Absolutely. Uh, a follow-up question to, to um, you know, feeling respected in, in the Army, even though you did not, would you, looking back on the experience, encourage women today to enlist in the military, to, to have that experience now? Oh, I would definitely encourage women to go into any of the armed services, the Coast Guard, Marines, Air Corps, because we can do as well as the men if you give us a chance. Fantastic. Um, another question came up, what year was it that you started uh, working in the Army? What, what year did you join? Uh, where did I train? What year did you join? I joined in 44, two weeks after I graduated from Mayo. I went immediately into service. So you, I'm sure you had some expectations of what you might expect after joining um, the army and you know, getting your training. Was there anything once you were there and, and deployed that was surprising or, or not what you expected once, once you got there? Well, I was really amazed that I would have to go through gas mask training, how to use a rifle. I was a medical person. I had no idea that I would have to go through this uh, learning to crawl my belly to get under a fence and things of that nature. And of course, we had no idea where we would be assigned, whether it was a cold climate in Europe or the South Pacific. Uh, we would guess from the clothing that was issued where we're going, but that didn't help. Thank you. Um, another question that came up, do you have any uh, memories from when you were deployed that stand out, whether they be um, impactful or even, you know, positive or fun memories? Is there anything that sticks out from your time being deployed that sticks with you today? Uh, when I was assigned to Saipan and had to develop my own clinic, I had no men to help me. Uh, there were, the corpsmen were, were not knowledgeable in rehabilitation techniques. And that's when I first realized the lack in my profession of teaching us how to set up a curriculum, how to set up a clinic, how to order equipment. That was a very, big moment when I had to learn that 
I had to request a corpsman and teach him. And my future actually came from that experience. So the army was a big asset to my success later in life. Yeah, what an opportunity that presented. How cool. Um, somebody in the group asked if you were able to make uh, friends while you were in the service. Say that again. Uh, someone in the group was asking if you were able to make friends while you were in the service. Is there anyone that you keep in touch with, or uh, with while you were deployed? Uh, yes, I made many friends, mostly with the corpsmen I was training. Unfortunately, the nurses in that in the 1940s were not really aware of my profession and at times were a roadblock to what I would want to do with the patients and had to suggest. So I actually had to go over the, the chief nurse that was my immediate boss to the head of the hospital and say, I know what I'm doing. Please tell your nurses to at least listen to me and try and understand. Today, of course, that's not true with present day nurses. Do you have any friends left from that era or? Uh, no, I have no friends left from that era. <laughs> Remember in three weeks, I'll be a hundred. <laughs> so not everybody was had the genes that I was given by my parents. Not everybody's still bowling at a hundred years old, but I think that makes you special. Yes, I'm a real bowler. Tell them you're at two leagues. Well, I'm in two competitive leagues. I'm doing so well in one league. They said, you know, this is a senior league. Let's see your birth certificate. <laughs> what a compliment. <laughs> yes, it was. Of course, they laughed after they said it, but because they, they knew my real age. Well, at least they trusted me that I was the age I was claiming to be. <laughs> What, how old, actually, how old were you when you joined um, the Army? 22. 22. Fantastic. Um, another question that came up here in the, in the chat window is, do you have, what are some lessons that you learned from traveling internationally during your service? Well, basically how to be a teacher how to, that's the main thing I learned. How to be a teacher, how to tell a person, you must do this exercise to get well. I mean, you can come and see me and I'll give you exercises, but it's what you do when you go home or when you're in your barracks that will make, will prove to be a success to you to get well. Yes, I think the main thing I learned was how to teach other people, which translated later into teaching nurses, certified aides, and particularly the families of the patients. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Um, another question that came through. So you, you were deployed for 18 months. How long after that, when you were back home, did you stay enlisted in, in the army? How, how long was your um, you know, tenure in the army? No, I, I was very happy to be discharged because of my personal relationship with the nursing profession. I wanted to get out and be recognized be free to do what I knew I had to do professionally. Uh, other than that, I would have stayed in the service, but I didn't see any immediate change to that opinion. Uh, there were other therapists that I talked to that felt the same way, so I was not alone. Again, I say, have to say that's not true of today's nursing profession and or medical profession. We physical therapists are accepted as part of the medical team now. That's changed tremendously. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, as we near the end of our session, is there 
anything in particular that you want all of us, but especially the young people and students on the call to understand about military service and, and what that means? Uh, military service to me was a little difficult in the beginning to accept because you have to take orders. You will eat between this time and that time. Being on Saipan, it was even more restrictive. I could not leave the compound of the hospital without two armed escorts, Bo both of them carrying revolvers or I don't know what kind of a gun. I am not familiar with guns. But I could go nowhere without two male GIs with me. It was very restrictive. And having grown up in, with an affluent family, I was used to going wherever I wanted. Taking orders was, is not easy. How about a good education through the service? You know, your college education. You, you well, get that? No, college education didn't help me. No, no, the, the service offers that, right? No. There's no education offered by the armed forces, or at least the army. Maybe today's army is different. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how it changes. Mm -hmm. We have two minutes left. One question before we finish up that I would love to hear. Do you have any advice or words of wisdom for, for all of the students and young people on our call um, before we end our time? Anything you'd like them to take away from this experience? I would certainly encourage any student to set a goal. What do you want to be? And then just keep working toward that goal. Like I knew I wanted to help people. I had to roll out being a doctor because I'm afraid of needles, even to this day. And of course that ruled out nursing because that involved needles. But set a goal. I want to be a veterinarian. I want to be this. I want to be that. And just keep working toward it and you'll succeed. Set a goal. Fantastic. Thank you, Betty. This has been incredible for us to hear from you. And I'm so grateful that we have this time together. So thank you for your service and thank you for spending this time with us. Um, I'll ask Darby if he has anything to add before we wrap up as well. Sure, yes, of course, just thank you, Betty. Happy Veterans Day to you and happy early birthday. In just a couple of weeks, this has thank been- you. Thank you. Of course, truly an honor for all of us just to have some time with you today and to hear your story. We are incredibly grateful for your service and a big thank you to everyone at home and in schools who have tuned in with us today to share in this memorable and inspiring experience. Looking ahead, we can- I don't know if I expired, but thank you for the honor of letting me share. Yeah. You absolutely inspired. <laughs> Look again, we can't wait to connect more students from around the nation to meet veterans in person, just like you, Betty, in Washington, D.C., to provide standing ovations that are so incredibly well-deserved as veterans arrive in our nation's capital. Our relationship with the Honor Fight Network is something all of us at EF are immensely proud of, connecting the generations and allowing history to come alive in a most meaningful and important way. This really speaks to the heart of Education First. Um, as we close, please just take two minutes to answer the survey that will pop up. Uh, we, would, we would love your feedback. So thank you to all. Happy birthday, Betty, and happy Veterans Day. Thanks may, so much. I, may I interject one last comment? Please. please, please, both boys and girls, consider physical therapy as a profession. It's very rewarding. You will never regret it. Thank you. Thanks so much, Betty. Wonderful to see you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you, Betty. Bye -bye. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Thank Day to all.